for thoroughness sake, I wanted to bring up a issue that several students have been uh, discussing. If you've gone through all four courses of the CSENT CCNA material, you'll notice that chapter 5 in the Connect Me Network is identical to chapter 11 from the Route and Switch, and that includes all labs. So instead of doing the lab videos over again, I am actually just going to repeat the videos for chapter 11 in Route and Switch with this announcement. Because again, I've gone through steps, I've gone through labs, and they are identical. 100% identical. Chapter 5, NAT, in Connecting Networks, and Chapter 11, NAT, in Routing and Switching Essentials. So again, all the videos for those belong here as well. Thank you. Investigating NAT operations. So, give it a few minutes so that it will be converged. Basically, we're making sure green dots everywhere. We're going to be going to the central domain and we're going to be going to that server. So I'm going to pick PC2. Doesn't matter which PC you pick, just pick one. I'm going to paste it in there and I'm going to let it sit for a minute. Uh, it's slow the first time, I just, it is what it is. So once we've done that, we're going to do the next steps. So this Last time I did this, this took about two minutes to actually populate. So just again, be patient with it. All right, so it took about an additional eight seconds, but it did finally populate. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna switch over to our simulation. We're going to edit our filters. We don't want ICMP, we specifically only want HTTP. And we're going to auto capture. All right, so I'm going to reset my simulation. I'm going to go back to my web address. And here they go. It will go to switch one, DC one, and it will keep going. I'm actually going to change it to the capture forward not auto capture playing so we did this one okay so now we're doing this guy right here as it leaves r2 it should be getting a different ip address that is due to the run due to the NAT settings. As it leaves out these areas, it will actually be grabbing a specific address. Specifically, it should be grabbing this one right here, port 80. So we just did this step right here. Log into R2 using class. Look at the address table. We just did that one. So we're going to click capture forward until the PD is over R4. Now it's on R4. Record the source. 
I had to resize my windows, but here we are over R4. Double click on it, you should be able to see the appropriate information at R4. Here's the header. Here's the outbound header. All right, so we've done that. Let's go ahead and keep going so that this guy is over the appropriate uh, branch server. Record the destination again. So I'm going to click on the envelope. Again, notice the change source destination. So that step's done. Now let's go ahead and go on both R4 and R2. It wants us to do a show. IP NAT translation. There we go. I will probably have to be more specifically this guy right here. All right, let's hop on R4. Show IP NAT translation. And here we go. Probably right here. So let's actually go back and let's verify. Source IP address, going to that guy right there, yes. There, and they line up. So, that's right. Let's hop back over to R2. Here we go, inside address, as it leaves R2 on port 80, which is added to that address, which is this guy right here, and it is. So now we've done part one, now we can move on to part two. All right, so I'm gonna go back to real time. I'm going to open up a web browser on my home desktop in my home office. Central server. I'm not going to do anything because it says without pressing or clicking. I'm going to go back to simulation. I'm going to reset it a few times. I'm going to click go. HTTP should already be the big one that's selected. And I'm going to click on capture forward. So we generated it there. So click forward until the PD is over to the WRS. Record the inbound and outbound information. Here we go. Inbound is this guy. Destination is that IP address, but it's natted to 64.104.223.2. So notice here, we took our private IP address and we natted it to this public IP address. So again, the 192.168.0 network 
and the 641010102 source destination. As it leaves the router, it becomes 64104223, and the destination stays the same. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to auto forward till we get back to R2. So click, we did that. So click forward until the PD is over R2. Again, there's our public IP address for our WRS. And you'll notice here, 64.100.100.2 then translates to this internal IP address. That's because this is masking the that. There's a one-to-one -one NAT rule that says anything that comes in on this IP address is really this internal IP address. Let's hop on R2. Let's redo a show IP translation. And actually what we're looking for is this guy right there. So do the tables grow? Yes. Does the WRS have a pool of addresses? Probably just a singular address. Everything is masked so that it can go on the internet using public IP addresses. That's how we hide our internal or private networks. Why does NAT use four columns for addresses and ports? Uh, inside addresses, outside addresses, and the different ports, assuming that we're doing uh, port translation or PAT. PAT, and actually our lab should be done. What you do want to do is you want to go back and want to record the IP addresses. I did not do that this for this lab, but for my steps, I didn't have to. All right, thank you.